Turn the little button down at the top. Get the microphones under control. All right. Are we recording? Okay. We try to record because we're not broadcasting, so the least we can do is try to record. This is all for posterity, you know. Someday people will be watching this and saying, who is that guy? Isaiah! Take your Bibles, please, and turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 28. Isaiah, chapter number 28. Beginning in verse number 16. Isaiah 28, verse number 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the waters shall overflow the hiding place. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with time that it goeth forth, it shall take you. For morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night, and it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. For the bed is shorter than a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering narrower than he can wrap himself in it. Interesting use of phraseology here, we understand that the first part of the scripture that I read talks about the Lord Jesus Christ, the foundation, the cornerstone, um, the precious cornerstone, the sure foundation, and he that believes shall not make haste. But I read that to just get some context and bring it down to uh, verse number 20. I'm going to have a little, uh, little illustration time perhaps. For the bed is shorter than a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering narrower than he can wrap himself in it. Now, mankind, generally speaking, desires his own comfort, does he not? We, we like to be comfortable. If there's anything we're going to be, it's comfortable. Anybody ever visited the uh, early church buildings that were built, like in New England? Ever, anybody ever been up there and sat in those things? Um, uh, we have... And uh, we've been to church in those for an hour or so at a time. And let me tell you, that is not comfortable. And I am sure that they probably made it that way so that it would not be exactly comfortable. Because they didn't want people to fall asleep. We make everything now so everybody feels perfectly comfortable and they can fall asleep. That's what the preacher's for, isn't it? So you come, you get comfortable, the preacher starts droning away, and you can fall asleep. That's, that's what it's all about. We like comfort. We want to be comfortable. The Lord says, perhaps, that it's not our comfort that perhaps we should be seeking. And that it is not us that's going to be able to provide that comfort. Mankind needs the two things it talks about here in verse 20. He needs, uh, he needs rest. And he needs clothes. The bed is shorter than a man can stretch himself on, and the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in it. Yet, we want everything our way. We need rest. We desire rest. But we want rest our way. We want the things that please us. We want to make our own rest. Did your mother ever tell you, well, you made your bed, so you have to lie in it? Right? Well, that is true in more ways than one. Most of the time, the pickles that we get ourselves in are mostly our own fault. But we want to make ourselves comfortable, but we are not qualified to do that. I mean, we can, we can, we can try as, as much as we will to get comfort out of this life, and yet life is going to be full of problems for you to try to get comfort out of, right? And if you try to do it on your own, you will have little success. Little success. So we need rest, but we want it our way. Did anybody ever sleep in a hay tick? Anybody know what I'm talking about when I say a hay tick? 
William, when I was in about the sixth grade, I went to Baptist youth camp twice in my lifetime, I think. First time I went was about fifth or sixth grade, and, and uh, it was pretty primitive because I'm old. And uh, it's pretty primitive when we went to camp, and now I guess the camps, they all have, you know, air-conditioned cabins and all of that stuff and the nice mattresses. and We didn't have any of that stuff. You got, you got there, and you, it was a tent, okay? Now, I know Maine is supposed to be cooler than here, but actually sometimes it can be very hot, especially if you are inside uh, basically a canvas green GI tent, okay, with one flap on the front. And uh, there's a pile before you got, you know, they, they bring you in. It's kind of like, you know, the, this is Baptist youth camp, but it's kind of like the army. You know, they line you up, they bring you in, they give you your rations, they say, here, here's your mattress, and it's a tick, you know, it's a, it's a big kind of canvassy thing uh, that you're going to stuff with hay. So you get to make your own mattress. And then they say, now the hay, hay pile is right over there, and it's only been there for a year. <laughs> so you go over and you take your tick, and you go over to the hay pile, and you stuff it, however you want. So if you're lazy, you put three or four straws in there, and you got nothing to sleep on. Now, for those of us who wanted a little bit of comfort, you know, we, we stuffed the hay in there and jumped up and down on it. And we, so we got this thing that's about like this big around, and then you take it in and you put it on a cot, and it kind of rolls off. One way or the And then to go to bed, you have to, like, climb up on top of it. <coughs> And if you ever slept on one of those things, this, this, it's not cool. Now, I don't mean it's not cool as in it's not fab or anything like this. I mean it's not cool as in temperature. Because hay is an insulator. So you've got this big bag full of hay uh, that you're sleeping on, and the, the little pieces of hay are kind of sticky, you know, and they stick through. <laughs> they stick through the canvas fabric everywhere, and... So by the time you get up in the morning, you have hives, and you look like a potato that's red. Making your own comfort. Making your own bed. And that's what we try to do in our lives. All of the problems that we have, all the things that we have, we try, well, I'm going to shed this, I'm going to get rid of this, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to take my tick, and I'm going to fill it up with that. I'm going to make... I'm going to make myself a perfect place to rest. And everybody's got their idea of what that's going to be. Whatever, whatever, whatever I'm going to do in life. You know, life is just going to hand me all these things that I want, and I'm going to do whatever I want with them, and my life is going to be a life of comfort and a life of rest. It usually doesn't work out that way. Because even if you could do that, there's all kinds of idiots around that are going to interfere with your life. So you're not going to be able to do that. So we not only have to worry about what we're putting in our tick, we have to worry about what everybody else is doing as well. Because you got everybody else in your, your, this is not individual rooms. This is a tent with like eight people inside the tent, and they're all griping. So you don't get any sleep. Because everybody goes, ooh, ah, you, yeah. It's hard to sleep like that all night especially with eight people doing that. Now, the person who is in charge, the, uh, the sergeant, everybody had a, a supervisor, you know, a counselor that stayed in their tent. This guy, this guy used to be a drill sergeant. No, I'm not kidding. That's what he used to be. So not only did you have to sleep on this thing, but in the morning you had to make your bed so that it looked like the army. You know, and that was kind of hard to do, and it was all lumpy. Because you know, I've had to make those beds, too, you know, the kind you can bounce the quarter off and all of that kind of stuff. Well, it's hard to do that when it's just over a pile of hay. But we're going to make it comfortable. We're going to take our life, just like that big old hay tick, and we're just going to make it comfortable for us. We're going to do what we want to do. We're going to surround it with all the things we want to surround it with. We're going to spray it down with stuff to make it smell good. We're going to put soft stuff over it. But you know what you got when at the, at the end of everything when it's like you've still got a hay tick? 
right? You still got the stuff that you have to deal with. Now, it's better than the ground. It's better than sleeping on the ground. So it's all in what you compare it with, isn't it? So maybe we should have some good comparison, but it's still far from what we desire. So as we grow up and we get a few more resources and we start buying bedroom sets, we want to buy one that we're comfortable with, all right? So now you can go to the store and you can't just, you used to go to the store and say, I want a mattress. They'd say, what size, queen size, here it is, take it home. Not anymore. Now, now, now when you walk into like, uh, what's the place down, Bob Mills Furniture or what down there, they got a doctor there. Come right in, I'm a doctor, I'm going to help you get your bed. I don't need a doctor to help me get a bed. I just need to lay on one, see if it's comfortable. This is the one I want. I'm going to take it home. But you know what? You can lay on all the ones they have in there. None of them are going to be comfortable. You have to buy one anyway. Then you take it home. You put it on your bed. You lay on it. This doesn't feel like the one I laid on at the store. Might be because 10,000 other people had laid on that one before me. I don't know. It never turns out the same. But think about how much energy nowadays just goes into thinking about what kind of bed we want. Now you've got beds that are filled with foam and beds that are filled with springs and beds that are filled with cotton batting and you've got beds that are filled with air and beds that are filled with water and all kinds of stuff in between. Most comfortable bed we ever had was a water bed. We had it for about 30 years. It was just a big bag of water. It didn't have any baffles in it or nothing. It was just the big bag of water and the big bed. We had it for about 30 years from about 1984, is that when it was? Or was it earlier than that? I thought it was around the time Isaac was born, around 80 or so. Anyway, from then until after we moved up here, we had the same bed. Because once you find something good, you know, why bother with anything else? Right. Now we went through several mattresses. You know, and a water bed is nothing to mess with. If it starts leaking, you better replace the bag because as soon there's going to be a geyser everywhere and then you're going to have to like bring the people in that dry out your house. Cuz it's got like 9,000 gallons of water in it. <laughs> and every time you want to drain it, you got to go through all that stuff. It's a real pain. But they're really comfortable. But the time comes when it's more trouble to try to get into the bed and out of it than it is to sleep in it. So when it got to the place that we couldn't get in and out of it anymore, then we had to get another kind of bed. So now we have a different kind of bed. But people put just half their lives trying to make the right kind of bed. And you can spend $25,000 on a mattress. Must be a good one. I mean, you got the buttons, you know, the, the select, you know, the select your firmness thing with air inside and pillows that blow up and all that stuff. All to get you in the right place, but it doesn't help because then you move. And you're guess what? You're uncomfortable again. And people complain about their $15,000 beds just as much as people complain about the $10 ones that they got at the thrift store. But it's all about us thinking that we can make ourselves comfortable. So all of the things that we do to make ourselves comfortable. But for some reason, all of this effort that we put into all of the things in our life to try to make our life comfortable, when it comes to our spiritual needs, we think we can make those comfortable as well. You know, it's all right. We'll, just, we'll do whatever we need to do. And we'll make it comfortable. Our rest will be perfect. You know, I'll, buy, I'll, I'll, I'll lay out the little things that I'm going to do. And I'm going to lay out the things that I'm not going to do. I'll never do this. No matter how much. How many, how many times they ask me, I'm not going to sing that song. I never teach a Sunday school class. Be a dark day before they get me down the aisle. Whatever it is, you know, we do that because we want to be comfortable. We want to be comfortable in our 
spirituality. We want our rest to be perfect. We'll just get just the kind of rest that we need, and we'll decide what that is. But guess what? There's someone else that knows how to make a better bed. There's someone else that knows more about us than we know about us. And there's someone else that knows more about how to make us comfortable than we know how to make us comfortable. If you don't believe that, just look around the world today and see what's going on. No one is comfortable. Nobody. Because even if you get to the place where you think you might be able to eventually get comfortable, someone is going to ruin it. Someone's going to ruin it. Just like Christine. You just get her comfortable, something's going to ruin it. And it could just be her. No, no. So... The Lord knows what we need to make us spiritually comfortable. We don't know that. We decide those things, but we're not qualified to do that. Why do you think they have a doctor at Bob Mills? Because you don't know what kind of bed is good for you. But you know what kind is going to make you comfortable. And to you, that's all that matters. Just because if you lay on it for a week, you might end up in the hospital doesn't concern you. But spiritually speaking, we have that same problem, don't we? We're going to lay on the bed that we want to lay on, and then it doesn't matter if a week from now we're going to be in deep trouble You know, if we continue on this course. So we think that we can make our own bed, but the Lord can make a bed that fits us. He doesn't make the same bed for everybody. Not everybody gets the same kind of sheets. Not everybody gets the same temperature in the bed. Not everybody gets the same pressure. Because everybody's different. But guess who made you? God did. So guess who knows what you need? God does. And guess who said that if you come and ask him, he'll provide you with everything that you need? Not what you want, but what you need. God does. He says that. The Lord can make the bed that fits. Not everybody needs the same kind of bed, but everyone needs the same maker of the bed. Wouldn't that solve a lot of problems if there was only one manufacturer? They wouldn't be trying to different ads to sell you the same bed. The Lord knows our needs. By the way, he remembers that we are dust. He knows who we are. He understands who we are. He understands who we are better than we understand who we are. And so he knows the type of rest we need. Just a few scriptures to kind of emphasize the point. Hebrews chapter number 4. I don't have these marked out here, so I'm looking them up right with you. Hebrews chapter number 4. Verse number 7, again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Sometimes instead of doing stuff harder, we just need to cease from what we're doing. And rely on what he's doing. Which would probably serve us a lot better. You say, well, I'm not going to let God make decisions for me. Okay. He's not going to force himself. He's not going to force himself to make decisions for you. You just go right ahead. You make all those wonderful decisions that will turn out perfectly. Right? And then 20 years from now, when I'm in the nursing home, you come and tell me how that worked out. God knows the type of rest we need. A couple other 
Um, 2 Thessalonians chapter number 1. Verse number 7, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 7 says, And to you who are troubled, by the way, is there anybody in the world today who is not troubled? <laughs> yeah, I don't think I have met anyone in the world that was not troubled. Even people that you look at and think, boy, I'd like to have his life. He doesn't have a care in the world. Really? You should sit down and talk to him. Because if you get him to open up, he has all kinds of cares. He's got all kinds of problems. And to you who are troubled, talking to just about everybody, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Rest with us. There, there's a place of rest that God has made. Rest with us. In Matthew chapter 11, which I use quite a lot. Matthew chapter 11. Verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find what? Rest unto your soul. Isn't that what everyone's looking for? Looking for a little rest for our soul. You want to find that? Find that in Christ. We need to go to the right place to find rest. Go to the maker. Go to the one who knows what real rest is all about and find our rest. The Bible says that we need rest. We need a bed. But we're not going to be able to make it ourselves. If we make our own bed, we'll have to lie in it. If we let God make our bed and you lie in it, God says you will like it. Amen? I know you say, no, I won't. Yes, you will. If you lie in the bed that God has made for you, you will like it. Will everything be a bed of roses? No. But show me anybody else who has a bed of roses. Did you ever try to lie in a bed of roses? Pretty thorny. Thorny issues in beds of roses. Let God make your bed. And stretch yourself out. You know, he says that if you, the, the bed is so that if you cover yourself and you can't stretch out, it's not, it's not going to fit. Listen, God's bed is going to fit. God's rest is going to fit. Stretch yourselves out on God's rest. He will take care of it. He will give you rest. He will give you peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Uh, Brother Josh, come and lead us in a verse of invitation. And then you can go home and get some rest on the very bed that you like.